Well, Chris, um, selection tonight. Uh, Ryan Burton, I guess we'll start with him. How'd the surgery go and how long do you expect he, he may miss? Yeah, so surgery went well. It was um, yeah, better than we had first thought. So um, you know, Ryan's had a bit of cartilage cleaned up. Um, I imagine that he'll be out for yeah, probably three to four weeks, but we'll take him up to Queensland anyway. So he'll do he'll do his rehab up there just in the hope that um, if there is potential for him to play probably in that last game against Brisbane that, that he's up there already and, and ready to go if need be. I think you're slightly different than the Crows. I think they're taking everyone. You're going to leave a small group back here, is that right? That's right. So we'll, we'll leave 12 players here who will concentrate solely through that period on, on their development. Um, you know, the, the idea that um, you know, having them come up and be part of the main training sessions right now, we think that you know, their time will be better spent spending a couple of weeks actually getting in amongst what they need to specifically um, work on, whether that be their endurance base or some other things for our younger players. So, so those guys will be, be kept here. We'll have you know, enough coaches um, and high performance staff, doctors, those types of uh, people around them to make sure that they're really well looked after. And you go tomorrow, the, whole, the group, the rest of the group, I understand. That's right, so, so we leave Friday. Um, and, uh, and look, the, the first couple of days are really about uh, just getting up there and preparing for our first game as we would as we did um, for our first game up in the Gold Coast round one get up there a couple of days early and, and uh, get ready to to play what is you know obviously a, a big team in, in Fremantle and, and you know, make sure that we concentrate on that before we start worrying about the amount of time that we actually spend up there just are there going to be scratch matches up there CD <coughs> for the, the players who weren't um, hit uh, just, I'm just wondering how the, the 11 or so who don't Get yeah, picked this week and yep. push for their spot. Yeah, so uh, we're working with the other clubs at the moment up there in order to, to make sure that they get some match practice while we're up there. I think the, the reality right now is that we're probably only looking at 16 days to be away from here. So if that's the case, yeah, we'll probably look at how we can work with the other teams up there in order to either put a game together, potentially joining forces with another team, or at least getting some proper you know, match sim training against an opposition type team. So did the development in terms of borders opening change this act of how many sent up? Uh, no, no, we, we were always only going to send up this amount. Um, and look, if, if the borders weren't to change, then we might actually bring up some more, um, you know, during the period of time that we are away. But we think right now, um, you know, we've, we've where things are likely to head that um, two and a half weeks we'll be able to get through with the with the squad of let's say 32 up there who will be fit and um, the guys here will as I say do their development work and where we can we'll try and get games into the guys um, where we can it's up, obviously up to the clubs now to, to organise that amongst themselves. What happens next? What happens after these 16 days? Do you have any clarity on that? Oh, well, I think the AFL will, will reduce uh, will sorry and um, release their fixtures um, over the next probably week or so for the, for a, for another period of time whether that be one or two weeks, you know, clearly we're all going to have to remain flexible through this period in order to make sure that when borders open up, whether that be South Australia or WA, that, that the AFL can capitalise on, on making sure that the fixture fits, you know, there, there will be no point fixturing the next four or five weeks and for our borders to change um, to the point where uh, Victorian teams can come into South Australia. So. I think the AFL are doing the right thing. Um, I imagine that next week we'll know a bit more about you know, what the fixture looks like. Where's um, Ollie's obviously, uh, it's a squad tonight. Are you expecting Ollie to be in that 26 man squad? Yeah, I think so. I mean, Ollie was clearly the best person um, on the ground, in my view, on that scratch match on the weekend. Um, you know, he's, uh, he's trained well, as we said last week. Um, you know, he got through the game um, you know, in, in good nick. And, He'll be one of the guys that I'm sure the coaches will look at from a selection standpoint um, for this weekend. Jack Watts, where's he at as well? Yeah, what's he? What's he played well? He uh, again showed that he was um, you know, class above um, probably. Uh, you know what else was out there from a, a ball use perspective? All the things we like from Jack. So um, yeah, you know, whether Jack comes back into the team or not this week, you know, he's certainly now in a position where he looks like he could be played if um, the coaches needed him to play. What, um, the petition from the board, it's obviously a strong statement, you really came to push forward and where the prison bar goes, which is iconic. Yeah, I mean, as we have said over the last couple of weeks, um, you know, it's important. It's an important moment for the club to stand up and make sure that um, you know, we present something to the AFL that 
that has has them um, compelled to allow us to wear it uh, in showdowns into the future. Um, you know, I think we we did the Guernsey um, everything we possibly could on on Saturday night, uh, and you know I think it's the AFL's decision to make. But, but you know both David Kosh and Keith Thomas here will make the appropriate representations from here to the AFL, and uh, and let's hope they see um, fit to allow us to, to wear that into the future. Just on Ollie, obviously a great response, you know, tough to be, you know, what he went through in the last week or two, but to come out <coughs> was, you know, as you said, one of the better players. He's obviously taken it on the chin and, and put his performance on the field. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a great week for Ollie last week and, and he clearly went into that game with, um, with a want to make sure that at the next time that the coaches could select him, that he was in that uh, selection conversation. So. Look, I've, I've got no doubt that, uh, as all of the coaches have said over the last week, that, that Ollie's now best 22. It's just making a decision on when he actually gets back into it from a fitness standpoint. And I think he did everything he possibly could on the weekend to, um, to push his case forward. Um, I know it's not necessarily a, a sporting thing, but it might be. Daniel Andrews, the Victorian Premier, was quite outspoken yesterday about South Australia, which got a lot of people fired up. I'm just wondering, has the Port Adelaide Footy Club, where you've got some comments or, you know, just um, in response? Yeah, I mean, it's always funny when someone starts um, what they're saying with, I don't mean to be offensive, but um, you, you know that what's coming is most likely to be offensive. Um, I, I'm a proud South Australian. Uh, I spoke to some people in Victoria um, yesterday who, who suggested to me that Daniel might be the best spinner that's come out of Victoria uh, since Shane Moore, um, minus the 700 test wickets and 300 one-day international wickets. So. Um, maybe, maybe he's got some things on his plate at the moment that he should worry about rather than um, potting South Australians. And yeah, clearly last week with what our premier was able to do and the South Australian government in getting you know 2,000 people into the Adelaide Oval was a fantastic thing. Uh, let's hope that footy can continue to bring people you know, back through the turnstiles and Victoria's got to um, carry its weight at some point soon. Just on the prison bars here. Is Sue tailored for a court date with Eddie? It sounds like Collingwood are really diehard in, in, in stopping you from, from wearing these prison parts. Uh, well, that, that'll be a discussion that's had at a higher pay grade than mine. Um, it, it, David Kosh and Keith Thomas will, will lead that. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I, I'm not sure what the legalities of it are. Um, I think that what we'll be going to the AFL with is a, is a reasonable request um, you know, based on the heritage of South Australian footy and, and the ongoing heritage um, of what showdowns you know, are. Do you have a trademark on colours? I don't know how it works. Can you trademark colours? Uh, well, I, I imagine you can you can trademark logos and those types of things. I can't imagine you can trademark um, specific colours, but that's you know, uh, not for me to necessarily um, um, worry about right here now. You will make, we'll make that uh, representation to the AFL at the, at the appropriate time, I'm sure it'll be over the next couple of weeks. and. And uh, you know it'll be the AFL's decision to make. What's the response been like from the South Australian community? Do you know how many people signed it overnight? You launched it last night. Yeah, I think the club's already over fifteen thousand people who have signed it. Um, you know, interestingly, it's not just Port Adelaide people who are um, you know, making um, representation here. I think that you've seen over the last week or so that some pretty um, pretty important people in Australia uh, in Australian football have uh, have supported our club um, in in our want to wear these prison bars in, in two games a year and I think that speaks volumes to what we're actually dealing with. This isn't this isn't club versus club. This is this is about um, uh, the heritage of the game here in South Australia. Um, and I think that you know um, Collingwood, I'm sure people outside of Eddie uh, are mindful of that. Why do you think it becomes so important now, been in the AFL for twenty three years, why do you think all the momentum is kicked off? Well there's, there's been various points in time where we haven't actually been able to wear it. The heritage aspect of um, AFL rounds, um, you know, stopped back in 2008 when we basically got the got the opportunity to start to wear it in games that were important to us. So um, I think it's a, a line in the sand moment. The club wanted to make sure that um, you know we were making the appropriate rep representation to the AFL in order to uh, uh, in order to take this particular issue forward and get a, a ruling on it from the AFL and, and go from there. I mean, as you saw, it's a it's an amazing Guernsey that's got a whole heap of heritage and and has a place in South Australian football. We, you know, we're not asking for anything other than for it to have a place continually at the Adelaide Oval against the Adelaide Crows 
uh, in a South Australian game. Um, you know, I think it's a pretty reasonable request that the club's making. Uh, would the club explore any opportunity they could use the Goonsie outside the showdown? I think right now our, our focus is just making sure that you know, we're able to use in the showdown. As, as uh, you know, Dave Kosh has said a couple of times, the heritage aspect of um, the prison bars right now is, is around the showdown. And so you know, we'll make sure that we can we can uh, play in it during the showdown and, and um, you know, outside of that we'll, we'll worry about that down the track. I mean, this is not to also make sure you know, our, our current Guernsey uh, is in any way um, downgraded. I mean, we, we love the Guernsey that we play and we just think it's important to be able to play in the prison bars and, and showdowns here in South Australia. Just a general comment about this weekend and, and going forward. You guys are on top of the ladder, you know, you're flying. Where's the, where are the squad at? Are they all in a good place? Obviously. Yeah, in a, in, a, in a really good spot. Because I, I think that, um, you know, as Ken had said before the weekend's game, they, they'd returned in, you know, fantastic um, physical condition. Um, we made a decision to have all of our coaches here in order to, to make sure that the guys had enough touch over that pre-season period. Um, you know, we're really confident about the way that we want to go about things. We played, played a Gold Coast team whose form looks to have stacked up in round one. Um, you know, we, we played Adelaide and played well on the weekend. Um, you know, our, our opportunity and our responsibility right now is to, to present uh, on um, the weekend against Fremantle and do the same thing that we've we've done in the first two rounds of um, this current season. There's a little bit of animosity about sharing a room with, with the Crows. Is that no, well, thankfully we're not sharing a room. Um, we're sharing a hotel. Um, <laughs> um, we're sharing a room. It might be an issue. But, um, no, sharing a hotel, I, no, we, we moved past that pretty early on.